Hello and welcome to a Rio Force tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make 60 frames per second smoothed animation with Dane app. Now I don't recommend this for a lot of animation because it'll make it look really really ugly. I mean look at all these artifacts, they're terrible. Anyway, but this does work for some applications I've found uh, as long as there's not a lot of movement or a lot of repeated patterns. Today I'm going to be using a Lego video that I animated and I'm going to be applying Dane app onto this. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the website I've linked in the comments and the description and you'll be able to download Dane app there. Now Dane app only works on Nvidia computers so that means that if you have uh, an AMD graphics card or an Intel graphics card, you can't use Dane app. You have to have an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, which supports CUDA 5.0. So what we're going to do is download it. It's going to want you to name a price. I'm just going to click no thanks, take me to the downloads. Next we're going to find the version that we want. I'm assuming the newest one will be the one we want to use. So it's Dane app alpha 0.4. Download, it'll pop up a thing, but here's the download right here. Click OK. To make sure you have a program that can open .rar files, which is a compressed format, I personally have 7-zip. It's easy to get and install, or you could just get it as an exe and it can be down. It can be portable, so you don't even have to install it. You could just run it off your desktop or a flash drive. Next, I'm going to navigate to my downloads. I find the Dane app rar file. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to click 7-zip and extract files. I'm going to actually go to the root of my C drive because that's where I'd prefer to run it out of. C slash Dane, and then it'll put it in that Dane Alpha folder right here. Click OK, and it works. And now I'm going to navigate to where I just extracted Dane. It extracted it to Dane App Alpha folder. I've just created an export folder and a finals folder for my previous tests. So under the Dane App Alpha folder, we're going to scroll down until we find daneapp.exe. I recommend creating a shortcut. Here it is right here. So I have the uh, I have two files prepared for our experiment. So I'm probably going to run into a problem on this file uh, in that whenever he's writing with his pen, it's probably going to smooth it out too much so it won't look right. And that's one of the problems with this is that it does smooth, but it also gets rid of a lot of detail. That could be very useful for you whenever you're trying to make a good animation. This cannot make good animation. It only interpolates in betweens between frames, so that way it can increase the frame rate or smooth it out. Here's another example of what I'm going to be trying it on. So in this clip, you can see it's a little bit choppy. It's because I animated it a long time ago. And I would like to smooth this out just so I can stretch it out to be a longer clip. Uh, the problem is it's so choppy, if I stretched it out, it would have a lower frame rate. Easy fix with Dane. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to open the Dane app. It's going to open this console here, uh, but it'll also open this window. So we're going to input file, Dane, we're going to find lofi.mp4. You can also use an MP a PNG sequence, but I've never been successful with that so I just use mp4 files. Um, I'm going to export it as mp4 because that's what I want it. I'm going to output folder. I'm going to go to export. I'm going to make a new folder and call it lo-fi. Select the folder. Okay so it's going into C Dane export lo-fi. So here's where the important part comes in. So there's a few options that you can play with around here. Um, with the frame handling options there's default all frames traded the same. Uh, remove duplicate frames. I don't recommend that because it, it alters the animation speed. Um, however, it may be useful if your video file is not, if your animation has uh, hold frames, which is the same frame repeated more than once in a sequence right after each other. Uh, that may be useful. I've never tried it though, but it can alter animation speed, which may not be good because uh, if you animate it at a certain speed, you might not want it to change. Uh, adaptive, rec adaptive record timestamps and remove duplicate frames, and static, and static record timestamps and remove duplicate frames both don't alter the animation speed, um, but it uh, removes duplicate frames. 
which is good. And but then it tries to fill it back in with other things instead of uh, instead of just deleting the frame entirely. And I prefer that because I don't want my animation speed to change because it could change a lot. So this one creates exactly the number of new frames in between. Um, and this one tries to guess how many frames it'll need to create. I'm not really sure the difference, but I think I'll use mode three. So under interpolation options, you can see my input frame rate is 12 frames per second because that's what I animated at. Um, sometimes when you render, it might be more, and it might be less. Like for example, one time I rendered a 12 frames per second animation as 24 frames per second. The problem there is that every frame is duplicated twice in the timeline. So it technically, it would have a really hard time interpolating that because because of all the duplicate frames. Now, if it can detect duplicate frames, that's good. It might work anyway, but at the same time, it could actually just be a really bad idea. So I recommend you always export your video as the frame rate you animated at to put it into Dane. So 12 frames per second, because that's what I animated at. Now I want to interpolate it. Um, I guess I'll go to 48 frames per second. It's not exactly 60. I can't get 60 from a 12, from a 12 frames because it's not in interval of six uh, or it's not divisible it's not an, an interval an interval however it does have a experimental uh, thing so you could like I can essentially set it to five times and it will go 60 I'm actually going to try this for this video but default does have cleaner results it says uh, but it it's a little bit slower um, but you can just try whatever you want. I always recommend using short clips and trying it that way because it's probably going to crash on your first try or any try. Uh, the shorter clips, the better because it runs out of memory a lot. So um, for this tutorial, I'm going to be exporting at a smaller size than 1080p, which as you can see is the original size. Um, because I want to be able to render all 34 seconds in one go. Uh, especially on this video, it's it's a loopable video, so if I didn't render it all at once, it might not be that good because it wouldn't have an it would have a, a cut where it wasn't interpolated at the same time. So, but I'm gonna downscale it for this tutorial. So new height, 720. Sorry, no, for um, yeah, 720. Um, and they also. They also have this thing where it can split the frames into seconds, uh, which works, I'm assuming. I've never tried it, um, but I prefer just downscaling for this purpose right now. Uh, the rest of the things you don't really need to worry about. However, if you are animating, however, if you are importing a video that has more than one shot, you might want to use don't interpolate scene changes and verify the scene changes. So because between shots, it gets really messy. But the problem with that is it's not always accurate. So you want to run this per shot instead of doing an entire movie at the end, because otherwise you'll have a really, really ugly mess between every shot. Uh, and that's it. And that's it for this. And I'm going to click perform all steps, render. I'm going to go back over to this console here. It's going to say starting PNG frame extraction which is going to put the frames under export, lo-fi, lo-fi, original frames. And as you can see, it's basically just turning my PNG into an image sequence that's 720p. And you know, I can click on it and I can see the 720p image. And then it'll create an interpolated frames folder in which it will then, whenever this uh, interpolation thing starts, it'll start putting the frames into that folder. However, this may take hours, so, ah, it's already out of memory. So the problem is I, pr I think I use the experimental, I'll, I'm just gonna go back to regular, and I'm gonna interpolate it 2x, just because we can still see the, now I'm gonna do 4x, So because we can still see the point of this video, but I ran out of memory because it could not get uh, six gigabytes out of my GPU perform all steps again uh, it's already done the frame extraction but it's going to do it again or just feed source frames into Dane since it's already extracted the PNGs and uh, now it's going to interpolate so 
Hopefully it won't crash this time. And there it goes. It started interpolating. It says it'll probably take an hour and a half to make this one clip. But in the meantime, I can show you. The problem here is uh, not everything can be saved with interpolation. I tried this one shot and it was shot, I think, at six frames per second, maybe, but it was, uh, or 10, I think. But it was unsalvageable because uh, the frames were too far apart. So it creates a lot of weird artifacts that always look very strange. And that's the thing. A lot of people say that this thing app is revolutionary and makes smooth animation, but it actually is not good unless you know how to use it. So here's an example of the uh, 60, the 24 frames per second shot that I shot that I showed you earlier. It smoothed it out, but it also makes it look kind of fast. I said I wanted to make the the shot double speed because 20 frames, 24 frames per second is double speed than 12. So uh, let's pull in the original as well so we can compare. It's a little bit better. Now, I mean, obviously the fireplace is slower and the entire shot is definitely slower. It's definitely slower than the original, but it's also smoother. Uh, and for linear movements like in this one, it does tend to work pretty well without artifacts. Um, but it also still relies on having good animation. If I take this um, normal shot, and do 0.5, this 12 frames per second shot, and extend it to 24 frames per second, you will you can see an obvious difference in how the, the frame rate is smoothed out by Danab. So in the second example, this is actually, it looks good if the, if the shot was already that speed. It looks like it was actually shot to be played this slowly without having a lot of jerky movements because it did fill it in in the computer and that's why i like dane app um not for entire films but for certain shots when you want to slow something down it actually looks good that looks bad because it's six frames per second and that looks good because it's 12 frames per second interpolated to 24. so i recommend if you want to try this out feel free to uh, but don't rely on it for a lot of things because it's not that good. So I'll show you the final result when this finishes rendering. Until then, please like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe I'll make some more videos in the future. Thank you.